welcome to the Scam Economy with your host, Matt Bender. Worlds are colliding on this week's episode of Scam Economy. I am your host, Matt Binder, and I'm quite frankly, really excited for this episode of Scam Economy. Why? Because we are finally having the episode I've wanted to have for months now, which combines the world of crypto, Scam Economy number one, with AI, artificial intelligence, AKA Scam Economy number two. Both bask in the glory of the tech industry hype cycle over the past two, three years. And now one guy is bringing them together. And that guy is the CEO of OpenAI, the creators of ChatGPT, Sam Altman. Yeah, if you're familiar with the tech space, you probably know Altman as the guy who is heading up the biggest company in the AI space. He's become, I don't know, like the, the Bill Gates to personal computers, what Mark Zuckerberg is to social. But what you might not know is his other project, WorldCoin. Now, this is going to sound crazy, but I promise you it will all... I don't know if make sense is the proper uh, word, but uh, you'll believe me when I talk about it with my guest. But WorldCoin wants to scan every person's iris in the world. That's right. The iris of every person in the world, eye scans. And in exchange, they'll give people a little bit of their WorldCoin cryptocurrency. The alarm bells should be going off. And by the way, after this great interview with my guest, do stick around for a bit of a update that you might all have seen coming, but it's still amazing to hear nonetheless. And before we jump in, patreon.com slash Matt Binder to support this show and all the work I do on all my shows and streams. You could go to youtube.com slash Matt Binder to catch the video version of this episode and go to scameconomy.com for all the links to the podcast version of this show. Now, without any further ado, crypto, AI, creepy eyeball scans. Let's dive into the world of, well, world coin. And joining me now to discuss all of this is Leo Schwartz reporter at Fortune. Leo, welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks so much for the invite. Now, now Leo, I'm, I'm super happy that uh, you accepted my invite because I have been wanting to do um, an episode that officially sort of crossed over these two sort of, I guess you can say, uh, uh, scam economies, modern day tech scam economies. The crypto economy, the crypto industry, which this show has obviously covered in depth since the beginning of last year. And then this new hype trend, whatever you want to call it, within the tech world of artificial intelligence, AI. And what better way to finally do that crossover than to talk about a project from Sam Altman of OpenAI, the biggest AI platform, his you know his crypto project, WorldCoin. Can you can you break down? Um, I guess for people who have never heard of this, and I'm assuming there's a lot of people who haven't. I'm assuming there's people who aren't even familiar with OpenAI either. Um, but can you just break down um, what is WorldCoin? Like, what's the basic idea behind that? Definitely. WorldCoin is a company that is hard to describe because so much of it is really stranger than fiction. Uh, and since I first learned about it a couple of years ago, has undoubtedly been my favorite company. So I'm so excited to talk to you about it today. Uh, basically, the idea is that in today's internet, it's impossible to tell who's, who's a human, who's not a human, who's a robot, who's AI. And also, in a future in which the world is controlled or run by artificial intelligence, there's the open question of how we're even gonna get paid, how money will be distributed. Enter WorldCoin, which is this idea 
conceived by Sam Altman, who created the hottest AI company in the world, OpenAI, a couple years ago, where the idea is basically there's this orb, uh, a literal physical orb about the size of a bowling ball. It was designed by one of the top Apple engineers or designers, I should say. And you hold the orb up to your eye and it scans you. And through some very complex algorithm and, and processing, it's able to verify that you're a human and that you have a unique iris that no one else has. After it does this, it gives you in return its own cryptocurrency that's called WorldCoin. And the idea is basically once you've been scanned and verified by this orb, you'll be logged as an actual human being and you'll also be entered into the system of UBI or universal basic income, where in some point in the future, after everyone's uploaded into this system, you'll be eligible for receiving the bounties basically created by this great AI awakening where maybe humans aren't working anymore and we need some other form of, of receiving income. Uh, it, I, I don't know if that sufficiently explains what the project is, but I think to, to put it really succinctly, it's a hardware product, which is the orb, which verifies that people are people. And then it's also this app, which is basically a crypto wallet that is able to dole out their own cryptocurrency. So it's like this circular economy of verifying humans and then paying them with cryptocurrency. So it seems like like the the general idea behind it though seems like all right, so so uh, we created AI. It's going to and this is not my framing of it because I don't believe in this framing at all, but this is their framing. We've created AI the, the this these AI language models they're going to take over a bunch of jobs. Um, eventually, robots, AI, artificial intelligence will be everywhere, running, running everything. How are we going to tell the difference between these robots, this AI, and real human beings? Enter my second company, which will verify real people and uh, apparently give them crypto for providing that biometric data that verifies that they are people. So it's like solving a problem that they think they are going to create. So that's certainly a concern from some researchers I've spoken to who basically, basically the criticism is Sam Altman has caused a problem by basically creating this world challenging AI. And then his other company, WorldCoin, is what cam comes in to solve that. I think where they would push back is a they say that ai is inevitable it's not just sam altman who's doing it it's every other company out there like google who's making their own ai uh and that b like a lot of crypto projects the idea of this is that it's supposed to be this decentralized protocol this nonprofit. obviously sam altman and this parent company that's called tools for humanity created the initial idea for it they've received all the venture funding which by the way if this seems really pie in the sky worldcoin is valued at three billion dollars and they're reportedly currently in the process of raising another 100 million dollars um, but the idea is that at some point this will all be fully moved over to a foundation it's not going to be controlled by any one company basically when we think about the issues we're already seeing with ai like you know proving that a video is not a deep fake or even using Twitter and proving who's a bot or not. They say, this is really the only way that we're going to actually be able to prove that someone's a human. And also after the economy is destroyed by the fact that AI does all our jobs, we need a more fair distribution method for figuring out how people are going to get paid. Also a caveat, you know, the US dollar will no longer be a thing. So it's going to now be a cryptocurrency that's borderless, whether it's Bitcoin or whether it's their own invention, which is WorldCoin. I, I, I feel like so much of this is really hard to break down because it reads so much like a sci-fi novel. But again, I just want to emphasize, this is a company that's been backed by top VCs like Andreessen Horowitz and is currently valued at $3 billion, probably will be even more uh, considering the height of Sam Altman right now and, and the hotness of AI. Right. And Andreessen Horowitz has a great record when it comes to backing crypto uh, companies. So... <laughs> 
I they've mean, made some questionable bets. Right. It's 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 you know when when I when people question like oh why is this why do you call your show you know the scam economy? I mean the fact that Worldcoin is even valued at three billion dollars for essentially uh, something that that ha- provides no value. It's completely the idea is that in the future it will run everything like you said like a sci-fi novel. It'll be what what you know d- uh, delineates between man and machine. I mean. I guess if your weird sci-fi world comes to fruition, but the odds of that happening seem rather low to me. Although to be fair, I do think we're immediately dealing with this issue online where as, as you've seen from Elon Musk's Twitter, there's really no elegant way on a lot of platforms of proving who's a bot and who's not. Obviously Elon Musk's method was we'll make everyone pay and that will separate, you know, bots from, from humans and Worldcoin is essentially saying, you know, if you look at the world as this globalized system, it's not country by country. You can't really have people like upload their driver's license to websites. And also they don't want to do that. You need some sort of other verification mechanic. And their idea from doing this and speaking with their engineers is they said, really, the only way to do this is through biometrics, which are irises. Fingers don't work very well. Face scans don't work very well. Uh, And then they think or they argue that they've basically created this privacy protocol that guarantees that your biometrics aren't actually stored uh, and that, you know, once you've been uploaded, this is the one thing that you need to prove you're a human forever and it can be used across the Internet. I mean, I think I'd rather just upload a photo of my driver's license, quite frankly. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> but if, if there's a website that's based in India, for example, maybe they wouldn't be able to accept a, you know, a New York driver's license. Like there's no there's no universal standard for that. Right. But they, but they'd be able to get their hands on one of these machines to take my biometric data. You know what I mean? Like or I'm guessing the, 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 in that scenario, you're banking on the person already being in the system, I guess. Right. Well, so the the API for it, so basically the world ID, which is the ID you receive after you've been scanned, will be the mechanic that every website implements. And that would also be like some profit sharing for the for the company. Uh, But yeah, the idea is that this would basically be a standard that's used across the web. And by the way, I think the bigger question here, like even if you assume that this method works, is, is what you just said, which is that everybody basically has to be uploaded to this for it to work, which is, you know, 7 billion people. I don't know how many adults there are, maybe like 6 billion adults. And currently, I think 1.7 million people have been scanned. So, and mm. again, because this is happening with actual hardware, with actual physical orbs that cost thousands of dollars to produce, they have to figure out some way to make sure that they can get this orb to billions of people and also convince them to be scanned. And that's sort of where the cryptocurrency comes in, which is it's a incentive mechanic. Well, I also want to say at this point that I have put my skin in the game and I have been scanned by the orb. And I, I think gonna, I can say that I'm, I'm the only journalist, maybe the only journalist who's done that. I was going to ask you, if there, I want to I talk more about the crypto aspect, obviously, because this is <laughs> the show's bread and butter. I want to talk yeah. to you about your own experience. But before we get there, there was something that really struck uh, stuck out to me. And I don't want to... I don't think we'll get back around to it. Probably not. So I want to mention it now. Um, you know, you mentioned that the designer of the orb comes from Apple. Like it was a top Apple designer. And to me, it's so weird to like uh, uh, make that a thing from their p- perspective. Like I know why you told me because they, they're obviously touting that as, it's, as if it's supposed to matter. But the orb is not a consumer facing product, right? The orb is there own like thing that they just need to like that's the the business end of it where they would go out and scan someone it's not like we're all walking around saying oh i want to buy you know that nice cool looking orb you know what i mean right 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 well it's an interesting question because speaking with so the ceo who's not sam altman he's a guy named sam blania who was a i think he was a phd student um in theoretical physics when he met sam altman in 2020 and and joined Basically, again, the the main question for WorldCoin's viability, besides every other question, is is its scalability and convincing billions of people that they should sign up. And what he said was early on in the process when they had this prototype of an iris scanning, you know, I think it was just like a pretty nondescript sensor back then. It's really hard to convince people to do that. 
So the idea, the philosophy was basically to make it really weird and make it really stand out so that if you're walking through the mall and you see this stand that promises that they'll scan your eyeball and give you cryptocurrency in return, and the object that they do it is this futuristic uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey looking device designed by an Apple engineer, that's probably going to catch your eye and make it a lot more likely for people to sign up because they'll just stop in their tracks. So right. it was already yeah. baked into it to like, it should, it should be just like this strange, really groundbreaking looking device to get people's attention. Right. All right. I guess that makes sense. Um, it seems like a lot, a, a much to do about a very small aspect of it though on their end, <laughs> but let's, let's talk about the crypto. Let's talk about the crypto now. Let's talk about the crypto because, um, seems seems like a, a weird uh sort of incentive uh because for one if i was to give you my biometric data now then i would want something immediately in return i would want you know i actually um i myself signed up a few years ago i, I wrote an article about the experience and, and i um did one of these full body scans for amazon and this was for one of their fashion, like uh, device, like uh, fashion uh, features that they were coming out with, where people would be able to like try on clothes on their like avatar or whatever their body uh, on their website. And the idea was, oh, we get all these scans so we could basically have all these different body types. Um, who knows what else they did with the data? But uh, <laughs> uh, that's maybe one area where Worldcoin is being more uh, transparent. Um, but I mean, I I could have got gift cards out of it, uh, but Worldcoin is offering crypto. Now, why why did they decide to give out crypto instead of giving an automatic incentive to people? Which, in my opinion, would probably uh, get more people. They probably have more than what was it, one point four million people scanned by now. If people actually got cold hard cash or the, uh, the equivalent of that they could use right now. So it's an interesting part of how WorldCoin originated, because I do think that a lot of parts of what we talked about, that this is this counter to the rise of AI, is a somewhat new development. I think it was baked into the product roadmap, but it's certainly become a bigger talking point now that AI is the number one topic of conversation in tech. Um, so I think at its onset, WorldCoin was definitely much more of a cryptocurrency project with the idea of basically creating this circular economy and flywheel with Worldcoin and getting that to be able to challenge Bitcoin or some of the other bigger cryptocurrencies. And part of the controversy is a lot of the early test markets for Worldcoin were in developing countries. There was a lot of criticisms of colonialism and exploitation by some great reporters at BuzzFeed News and MIT Tech Review about that. Uh, and speaking with some of the Worldcoin operators, they said that they have experimented at the beginning with not just giving out Worldcoin also giving out other cryptocurrencies like Tether, I think like DAI and other ones that do have immediate value, as well as they even experimented with doing AirPod giveaways. So to try and get that incentive of people to sign up, they have tried different methods. Um, but I think now they're mainly just giving out WorldCoin. And I think they're banking on the fact that a lot of people will just essentially gamble on it and say, okay, this isn't worth anything now, but it takes me 45 seconds to sign up. And maybe if I'm an early adopter, you know, this could be the next Bitcoin. Uh, the other interesting wrinkle is that because of the regulatory uncertainty of cryptocurrency across the world, even though it's called WorldCoin, it's not going to be available in a lot of markets. So, for example, even though I signed up in the U.S. and I have my world ID, I'm not actually eligible to receive the tokens. So it won't be available in the U.S. It won't be available, obviously, in China, which is banned cryptocurrency. I think Turkey and Iran are two other countries where it's not going to be available. So, you know, even in a lot of countries like the U.S., which they'll undoubtedly have to be able to get people to sign up in order to have this feature of being able to implement World ID on websites, they're going to have to convince people to do it without really an incentive mechanism because WorldCoin won't be available there. I mean, it seems like that's a pretty big uh, uh, roadblock <laughs> for them, for sure. Uh, yes. I'm starting to doubt, again, uh, how smart Andreessen Horowitz and the other investors into this are. I mean, if you can't provide 
what would probably be your biggest market uh, with the, your biggest markets with an S even with that incentive, then you're probably not going to get too many people to um, to join. Now, what what is the what is the uh, it almost seems like we're talking a, a fantastical scenario now with that caveat. But what is the the UBI aspect of this? I've seen that people talk about how like, oh, it's going to provide like a universal basic income. Is it just like that original amount of tokens you receive if you can receive them? Or is there something more to that? So this part has been really hard to nail down. And I was really interested in it because I do think UBI is a fascinating conversation, whether it comes from governments, whether it comes from private organizations or foundations. So I did ask a bunch of the investors about it. I asked Alex, the CEO, about it. Um, I, I think the idea, well, there isn't really an idea. They basically say, you know, given this future where income is disrupted or income sources are disrupted, there will be another model that's put in place. Uh, one thing that was cited was uh, something that's called the windfall clause, which is like if a company generates some high percentage of the GDP of a country, then they're mandated by law to produce a certain amount of their income that will then be distributed as UBI. At some point, maybe that will be implemented through WorldCoin. It's really unclear how that's actually going to work. The other interesting thing is, and I, I know you know this as a, a crypto connoisseur, usually a project will release its tokenomics or its white paper, which basically lays out like, here's the minting mechanism, here's when all the tokens will be released, on what schedule, who they're going to be distributed to. WorldCoin hasn't done that yet. So while someone familiar told me that about 70% will be distributed to WorldCoin participants and 20 or 30% to you know the foundation investors, it's really unclear what that schedule is going to look like. So I do think a lot of the UBI elements of it are very up in the air. I mean, if you if, if you can't even put yeah. in the basic work that meme coins and like scam influencer tokens put, put in, <laughs> like even they will upload their white paper, even though it's complete bullshit. If you can't even just put something together, I mean, it's very weird that they're like, it's not even like, oh, you know, the crypto is a side uh, you know, a, a side part of this. It's a side idea. You know, we, 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 we were trying to think of incentives for the, 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 the iris scanning and, and that just came up later on. It's literally the freaking name of the, <laughs> the entire thing. Worldcoin. It is the, the main premise just uh, by default. It, very weird, right? Yeah. And, and to be fair to them, like, you know, I, I don't see any reason to doubt their commitment to this open source decentralization, like I think is true with a lot of crypto projects, despite the execution, they have open sourced a lot of elements of it, like the design of the orb or the protocol for how they actually do the privacy preserving elements of it. But again, like I think it's a fair criticism to say, you know, if if the idea of this is to create basically what the future economy will look like, we need to see more mechanics of how that will actually be executed or even how WorldCoin itself is going to work, let alone, you know, how we're going to compel giant corporations to give 20% of their profits to the world. Right. Okay. All right. Right. Well, for, for, for <laughs> me, for me, that's where this, this, so, so this is something then. So, so earlier you had mentioned how, you know, they, they're envisioning a scenario where WorldCoin becomes uh, like, like the currency it's worth more than a Bitcoin. How do they explain that? When the basic fundamental idea behind this is that everybody in the entire world will eventually have free world coin that's given to them for just scanning their iris. Where does the monetary value of world coin somehow uh, through osmosis make it worth more than Bitcoin? Unless they're hoping, unless they mean in a scenario where Bitcoin falls down to like uh, less than a penny, uh, then world coin could one day be worth more. But where, where, how does this make any sense if everyone gets uh, ostensibly free world coin? Yes. Well, I would say the economics of this are, are beyond my pay grade, you know, combined <laughs> with the as, combined with the fact that they haven't released their tokenomics, which also makes it difficult. Uh, but speaking with one of their investors at uh, one of the backers called Variant, I think the idea is essentially, you know, if you assume that, A, every single person in the world 
or most people agree to sign up for WorldCoin, and B, there has been some sort of vesting schedule where like maybe early adopters get more than later ones and everyone has it, it will create this flywheel in which WorldCoin is just so ubiquitous that it becomes the currency du jour. But again, I, 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 I tried to like nail down more specifics in my interviews. Maybe I didn't do a good enough job of this, uh, no, but, but I, the, I think probably, what they're you, banking on is... You probably <laughs> did everything you could. <laughs> I did everything yeah. you could. Um, I, I will say though that man, it's going to suck for you if we're wrong, at, or I'm wrong at least, and this world coin thing takes off, and you weren't allowed to get your early world coin uh, tokens. You would be, you'd be, you'd be one of the wealthiest uh, people in the world. In about, I don't know, uh, how many people do they sign up every year? So they say it's about 40,000 a week right now. I think the last time I checked, it's at 1.7 million. It was 1.4 million when I wrote this article last month. And then again, you know, they got to get to a, a, a easy 5 billion or so. So if you're one of those first 10 million, then that could work out pretty well, unless so you're dude, in the United States like me. Based, <laughs> I, I crunched some numbers really quick. Based on those numbers, in approximately 5,000 years, you will be kicking yourself for not getting those world coins. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, what they say is that they're ramping up the production of the orbs, that it's in beta. And I think a lot of a lot of what they say is that this is in beta mode, like they can scale when they need to, at least in terms of having the orbs out in the field for scanning people. The hardest part will be, as you've said, convincing people to do it if the main uh, if the main reward is going to be a cryptocurrency that's not currently worth anything unless you know, you basically have to have a world ID to work with certain websites. But all of this is just a, a classic chicken and egg problem of it's it's hard to really understand how that's going to get started. Have they have they considered um, um, maybe they you, you didn't talk about it, but have they can talk about this? But have they considered um, the sort of social societal sentiment, social sentiment um of what they are doing because as we're we're discussing one of the uh the world coin um one of the major um sort of talking points among at least right-wing americans is that china is implementing and overseeing social it has implemented this big brother social credit score and it follows you everywhere, and any sort of um, uh, any sort of um, conversation uh, around um, you know any sort of identification in this country has gone in that direction with the right wing here. This seems to be like that on steroids, um, and I'm assuming that honestly, if there was something this sort of ubiquitous sounding that. It would actually that sentiment would probably flourish well beyond that specific political ideology and would probably be more mainstreamed, at least people being cautious about it. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest concerns that people have voiced about it is the biometric aspect. Uh, you know, one of the main critics has been Edward Snowden, who has said it's not great to have a private company or even the government, you know, scanning your eyes and having this information. I, I do think, and again, a lot of this technology uh, is is a bit over my head, but speaking with a lot of the engineers on the project, so much of the resources they've spent have been, you know, with the first principle that they argue that iris codes are really the only way, or irises are really the only way to verify humanity, basically then all the rest of their resources have been using the best cryptographic techniques to make sure that your actual biometric data is not stored anywhere. So for example, after your eye is scanned, it's not like it's saving a photo of your eye. It's converting that into like a, a bespoke code or algorithm, which is then entered into a database. And then when you, you know, go on a website to have your world ID verified, it's done so with a zero knowledge proof, which means that the website never actually gets your information. So They've spent a lot of resources in trying to emphasize the privacy element of this. Obviously, there's a lot of critics who say that they haven't succeeded or that, you know, just this idea of a company asking for your biometrics in the first place isn't a good look. So then, yeah, I think the natural next question is if this one organization has access to the world's information and also controls this currency, 
how decentralized could it possibly be to the point where you feel comfortable that all of that power is actually concentrated in one organization? So I don't know. It's it's, it's it's sort of scary. It also seems like an unwanted sort of scenario where your uh, WorldCoin ID would be necessary to sign up for various different services. Like, for example... I'm sure someone wouldn't want to like, oh, I got to, you know, sign into my kid's school's website so I can view their report card. Let me uh, put in my, you know, log in with my WorldCoin ID. And oh, uh, later tonight, I'm going to go log into Pornhub with that same <laughs> ID. I mean, there's people who like to use different, um, you know, handles, email addresses, uh, uh, just be straight up anonymous for various different reasons. And it seems like if a world coin, any sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, overarching uh, ID system uh, would be a require as a requirement would would go counter to how a lot of people would like to use uh, various different products and services. Yeah. And I mean, I think this is the concern with so many VC backed projects is this really doesn't work, at least in my mind, if this is just like some little feature that's used by some websites as an alternative to other login techniques. Like, as you said, I do think WorldCoin basically only succeeds if it is adopted by billions of people, Is it if it is adopted by most online services and even governments or like schools or job websites when you want to upload your diploma or something like that. Uh, and also the currency has to catch on. So yeah, it, like it, it's a good question where will this be the only option in the future? Will this just be like one of several options? I don't know, but it does seem like with the amount of funding they have and their ambitions, they're really envisioning this to be one of the major options for everything from currency to online verification. Yeah, right. And and it seems like, you know, maybe they they, you know, they claim and will believe them that they don't hold on to any sort of this biometric data. But it seems like if everyone's forced to the, have their entire being connected to this specific ID, uh, there will be, and every single website on the planet is using it, there will be some sort of, of security flaw along the way that will undoubtedly uh, show, hey, this person's connected to all of these products and services. You could literally see their entire history here, or at least what they've signed up for. Yeah. And I guess theoretically, something like zero knowledge proofs where you're not actually sending or sharing information every time, but just verifying that the information is in fact true would preclude that. But again, this is why I went to journalism and not engineering. Right, <laughs> because, right. Yeah. So, so, so let's talk about your personal experience here. Let's, let's, let's get into um, what happened, what, what went on. So first of all, how did you... How did this come about? Did you reach out to them for the piece or did you, did they, how did this come about even? Yeah. So they reached out to me with the launch of world ID, which happened, I think last month, uh, which is, you know, the, this mechanism for signing up to things, which has now been launched with the actual app, which is a crypto wallet. I think it launched last week. Um, so they reached out. i had been obsessed with this company for two years because I was doing more global reporting before and had seen the great reporting from BuzzFeed News and MIT Tech Review about how WorldCoin had operated uh, in, in developing countries. I forget exactly which countries, but I know in, uh, in like Africa, I think also like Portugal, parts of Latin America. Uh, and I said, you know, I want to write about this, but I also <laughs> ideally want to be scanned. I want to talk to everyone at the company. Uh, and it, it's been a fascinating experience. So, so, how did the process actually work? Did um, I mean, did you have to go somewhere? Did how was the? Oh, tell me the whole. Like, walk me through as if we're like in real time here, so people could get. Because I'm gonna assume that people who listen to the show uh, are gonna be amongst the last to sign up for Worldcoin. <laughs> Probably the most skeptical of the skeptics uh, here watching, listen, watching and listening to this. So explain to them what they're missing out on. Yeah, so there was not an orb in New York, so they had to bring an orb here, which was very generous. They had a WorldCoin employee come. They have a special designed backpack that carries the orb. Uh, he came to my apartment to do it. They didn't want to do it in a public place, uh, so they, you know, they take out the orb. They hold how it big, to your face. How big is this orb? It's about the size of a, a bowling ball, I would say. 
like really? a, a medium was, a medium sized bowling ball. I was maybe expecting, one or two pounds. Yeah. I was expecting like one of those like old school like webcams. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like maybe, oh no, it's it's large. I was expecting like this isn't this is even bigger than I thought, but this is my uh, my Star Wars from Disney Coca Cola <laughs> thing that they uh, sell there. I thought it'd be like this size. You're saying it's like almost like this, like the size of your head, really, if it's a bowling ball size. Yeah, well, I have a big head, so maybe a little, maybe a little smaller. <laughs> okay. But yeah. <laughs> Damn. That, okay, I wasn't expecting that. Is is it heavy? Yeah, it's heavy enough that if you hold it for you know maybe five minutes, your arm will get tired. But it's been specially designed to be able to withstand harsh conditions, which is why they say they tested it everywhere from you know, Sweden and Portugal to sub-Saharan Africa to make sure that it could survive in the cold and in the hot. Uh, it's and this, either set up on a stand or someone holds it up to you. I was just uh, going to ask that. Is there like yeah. uh, peripherals that it needs to like set up like a, a tripod and everything? But um, so, so they, they get it set up and how, how's the scanning process? Like, do you feel anything, see anything? Is there anything like lasers shooting into your eyeballs or something? No, <laughs> sadly, no lasers. It that, this is supposed on, to be a sci-fi a little... scenario. I want some like, <laughs> is it like they making like wishing sounds like, woo? <laughs> like... <laughs> that, that would be a good note to them. When you invite them on for the next, the next episode, you can ask them that they should have the little laser, like, I don't know. Minority Reporter Blade Runner that it goes, right. yeah, right, right, but none of that, yeah, uh, but none of that. No, it just lights up. It makes some beeps and bops, and you know, a few of the three sensors light up, or I shouldn't say sensors, but like there's three dots, uh, and then it doesn't really do anything. It just is scanning your eye. You don't really know what it is, and it says scan complete. And How long we'll, is the process? I would say that scan took about 30 or 45 seconds and then you get a notification on your phone. You have the app. I don't, the app just launched last week. Again, I don't know if you can download in the United States, but maybe some of your international readers can or viewers can. Uh, and then you get, you get your special world ID. And if you're one of the lucky many who aren't in the US, you get your world coins. All right. That's interesting to know that whole yeah. process. And, and so you get, you get, I mean, as a reporter, you obviously uh, passed on any incentive, I assume, uh, but um, did they, they didn't offer, like, they didn't tell you that like, oh, and if you're not eligible for WorldCoin, there's something else. There's just zero incentive. Well, they're not doing it in the U.S. right now. Uh, I think uh, you like... They've so been be going the... to specific con. No, they've been going to like some conferences and events, and they've been having it there. Like I think they're at ETH Denver. They might be going to Miami this week. Uh, but no, I, the the incentives are only if you're if you're outside the U.S. And I believe they've stopped offering other cryptocurrencies at this point, and they're only doing Worldcoin. But I'm not positive about that. All right, interesting, interesting. So this week AI is in the news because there's been you know basically uh there's been a, there's been a few actually ai hearings on capitol hill uh uh this week on on tuesday uh, alone um but one specific one that happened may 16th was sam altman of open ai and worldcoin had his first hearing i believe it was his first hearing uh, at least to talk ai um on capitol hill he it was a, a senate hearing on uh, AI in general, and a lot of discussion around uh, potential issues, risks. Um, everyone seemed on board with some sort of regulation being needed, which is very interesting that even rarely do, do uh, this Congress and the uh, p people on the panel sitting before them agree on issues. And this was, I, I was watching it, and it was very... Uh, it was also very interesting in the sense that Congress seems to get this more than they get social media. But that's also <laughs> because I think uh, the the risks are not so technical in the way social media is. Like uh, old uh, old members of Congress are not going to get content moderation, but they're going to get uh, loss of jobs and copyright infringement, which is, you know, that's, I think, the, the, some of the main AI concerns. Um, so they get that. Uh, but it's interesting to see all of a sudden, 
around the same time period, WorldCoin getting thrusted back into the news. And I think it's it seems like, um, and you might have even mentioned it very early on in our discussion, that WorldCoin might have been floundering a bit uh, due to crypto winter and the fallout from you know Terra Luna, FTX, and the many different crypto lender failings um, and exchanges, honestly. We're about to see, we might see some more crypto exchanges drop shortly. So stick around for that episode, folks. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like, it seems like the, the AI boom has lifted up this one crypto project because of its connection to uh, Sam Altman. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, in conversations with their team, they said that they had delayed the launch because of the pandemic and the crypto winter. I mean, also, I think basically until my reporting or until they had come out with this new World ID product, they'd been pretty silent since these two pretty damning reports from BuzzFeed News and MIT Tech Review that were last year about exploitation in the developing world, which again, they, they say was just a, a facet of beta testing. Uh, so I, I do think Wait, well, the rise of AI, <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. We we need to get a little bit in depth there because that seems like uh, quite the, uh, oh, you know, uh, brush under the rug there. Uh, sweep under the rug, I guess I should say. Um, uh, the the uh, th- exploitation of people in developing nations was just a facet of a beta test. I mean, uh, oof. They said it was just experimentation. You know, there was accusations oof. of <laughs> You don't want corruption. to use that word either. <laughs> there was accusations of lack of transparency. And they said, you know what? We test in a lot of markets. Some of them worked. Some of them didn't work. That was the explanation. What exactly did they they? they and I'm sorry for interrupting you, but when you also came up, when you also shared that they said it's just part of experiments, you also don't want to say that word when you're talking about uh, people in the developing nations either. But um, beta testing. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, what what when we say exploitation, what exactly was going on here? What did BuzzFeed and and who else uh, who who wrote the other report? MIT Technology Review. And MIT Technology Review, what did they find? Like, what, what are we talking about here? So the issue is that the operators, which are the people who are actually doing the scanning, are basically gig economy workers. So I think there was a disconnect in how they were getting paid or the incentive structures that they were getting to sign people up in the early days, combined with the fact that maybe in some of these economies, the way in which they were signing people up or getting approval from local government officials may or may not have involved some corruption you know how is the messaging with what the people who are getting signed up were actually getting how was that framed there is a lot of early issues there uh which is pretty widespread among tech companies and their rapid spread across the world right right but also other tech companies usually aren't dealing with your biometric data i think that's a huge huge difference here yes and also that hadn't really been as ironed out i think in the early days like it wasn't as guaranteed that it was as privacy preserving as as maybe they say it is now right like if i had to choose between oh you uh you know you gave my uh my uh you know the the you know my my search history on your platform to a third party advertiser and then uh uh my biometric data is lost i I'd, I'd prefer the first one i'd prefer <laughs> i'd prefer them just giving a little bit of my search history to the third party honestly <laughs> yeah so they were dealing with with that press cycle. They were dealing with the fact that it probably wasn't the best time to launch a cryptocurrency. And then Sam Altman became the hottest figure in tech. Although, interestingly, he's doing a lot of interviews, but he's not really talking about WorldCoin. He mentions it a little bit. And I tried to get an interview with him, and, and he declined. So, Or he wasn't, he wasn't made available, I guess I should say. So it would be interesting if someone has the chance to really – Ask him about WorldCoin for the next reporter who gets an in-depth re- interview with Sam Altman. That's my plea. Ex- what exactly is his role in WorldCoin? Because he's not the CEO. Um, no, I think he's just a co-founder now. Is the is the title? I don't okay. I don't know how. I don't think he's really. From talking with Alex, he said, you know, they they still discuss it a lot. I think he's involved with the vision, uh, no pun intended. But I don't know. I don't know how involved he is on on the actual day-to-day operations of it. 
Right, but he's not cut off from it because you could also say that you know Elon Musk is a co-founder of OpenAI, but it's pretty clear that he's cut all of his ties. Yeah. But, no, he's but, not cut off. Okay, so Sam Altman's still involved in at some level as a co-founder. Interesting. I would I would love to know what what that um again for whoever I guess would talk with him next would love to know exactly what his his uh, interaction and influence there is because. Uh, Seems like if he's making that product that uh, requires <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, introduction of the WorldCoin product, you should you, we we should be pretty transparent about what his role is there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it came up in the congressional hearing today, but I would have no, loved it to didn't. Have seen it a, didn't. A representative I watched ask it. him about it. Yeah, right. And to be clear to people, but we are talking uh, May sixteenth, so everyone. Oh, yeah. uh, yep. Uh, this episode was obviously up, will be up a few days later. Um, but you know, it's, it's really like, I'm, I'm, people would be very skeptical if like, um, you know, you, you sold the product that, um, you know, made, uh, you know, I don't know, your, your nails grow really long. And then you came out with a secondary product that was designed to clip those very long nails. <laughs> like it would be like oh you wait a minute so what's going on here did you purposefully are you purposely causing the issue so you would have a secondary uh you know product on the other end to you know to monetize like so you're 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 you know taking money on off both tables you know it's seems like something that people should know yeah or they're just very forward thinking right oh, also though i do think i i think generally from my own personal view, and I know I know there are a lot of people who um, I know we only have a few more minutes here, um, and I, I would be interested in how you feel about it. Uh, obviously, that's why I'm bringing it up. But uh, <laughs> um, I think that a lot of the dangers, quote unquote, of AI, are so overblown, and I don't mean it to to downplay the real risks for you know uh, uh, creatives. And maybe some jobs where, um, you know, artificial intelligence will move in and, and, and you know, take away uh, some of those jobs. But the idea that, like, AI is going to be – has the potential to uh, destroy us or, or even WorldCoin scenario where, uh, you know, men and robots will be walking amongst each other and we'll need this ID to tell the difference. I mean, I, I, I don't foresee it. At least not in our lifetimes, not in our children's lifetimes, not in their children's lifetimes, not in their children's children's lifetimes. I can keep going, by the way. Uh, what's, what's your take? Yeah. And as someone who, I should be clear, doesn't cover AI as a main beat, it does seem like with so much tech, including social media, so much of it is baked in as a marketing technique where you basically have to market it as this world changing technology that's going to completely restructure society in the next year or two years. Um, like I remember that one documentary on Netflix about social media where it had all these former employees of Facebook being like, yeah, we could, we understood people down to like the exact thing they were going to do next. And even though they were criticizing it, they had to position it that way because it made them seem like geniuses. Uh, and I think there's something similar with AI where obviously even some of the people opposed to it, like that famous letter that I think was signed by Elon Musk, we're positioning it as basically being developed by geniuses in this thing that's going to immediately change the world. And like you said, for WorldCoin to catch on and to have this future in which uh, we need to verify who's human and who's not immediately, or there's been such a cataclysmic event that companies are willing to shell out 25% of their profits to fund UBI. I don't know. Is that something we're going to see immediately? Is that something that the current iteration of AI is going to create? Uh, it's hard to tell, but it, it does seem like for WorldCoin to succeed, that would have to happen. Right, right. You just reminded me that 60 Minutes did a, uh, a segment with Google recently about BARD, their AI chatbot, like OpenAI's chat GPT. And there was this moment where Google tries to sort of sell this idea that BARD self-taught itself a language and they had no idea how bard did this and then uh, an ai researcher who's familiar with um you know the data sets 
uh, basically dug in and found that, oh, yeah, uh, Google actually fed Bard uh, one of these languages that it started it fed in them the language. And I guess Google either uh, maybe didn't know, which is concerning that these uh, companies behind these AI language models and uh, the data sets used to train them don't know what they're training them with. Or B, they just pretended in the moment for, for marketing, which is ridiculous. I mean, the, 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 and I think that's the, almost the sad part about this too, is that unlike crypto, which I think has no real utility, I see use cases for AI. And I think the hype machine has the chance to actually kill AI for its, you know, even in terms of its actual use cases, just like how, uh, you know, the hype machine for, I've talked about this on the show before too, Google glass killed Google glass. Uh, cause you'll see these companies now coming out with, uh, you know, sunglasses that record and you don't see the same sort of, you know, uh, craziness around it cause they just sell it for exactly what it is to, to sunglasses with a, a camera and Google tried to pretend this was going to change the world and they ended up killing their own product. Yeah. It will be fascinating to follow. Right. Uh, Leo Schwartz, reporter at Fortune. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, a, uh, is there anything that you have coming up you'd like to share that we'd be interested in? Or B, and, then, and then B, not, or, or end, uh, feel free to uh, drop all your links, social media handles, where people could find you. Go ahead. I appreciate it. Uh, well, thanks so much for the invite. First, uh, you can find me on Twitter as long as Twitter remains a platform at Leo M. Schwartz. Uh, read my coverage at uh, Fortune Crypto. I'll be in Miami this weekend for Bitcoin Miami, so I'm sure there'll be some fun articles out of that. I'm attending a crypto-powered karate tournament. Not quite clear when that's going to be, but it should be an interesting piece. Oh, wait, uh, hold and- on. You're going to the Bitcoin conference. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, I might have to ask you what your schedule is next week too. You might have to do back to back episodes. I'm going to, I'm going to call in from a boat. <laughs> oh, you'll be on a, a boat. Oh, ooh. I hope so. Knock on wood. We'll see. Something's going on there on a boat. Interesting. I'll have to ask there's you always, about that. There's always boats. Yeah. All uh, right. All right. All right. Have a, have a fun time at the Bitcoin event. Um, which by the time this episode comes out, you actually, uh, might be there in real time. Yeah. <laughs> Coming at you live. All All right. right. Thanks so much. Take care, Leo. Always a pleasure. And even after that great episode with Leo, I got more for you. Shortly after I recorded with Leo, there was a world coin update. This comes to me by the way of Molly White's great website. Web3 is going great. And it was originally reported by the crypto news website, The Block. Basically, WorldCoin is facing reports that people in China have been purchasing iris scans from individuals in Africa and Southeast Asia in order to circumvent restrictions on their participation. And then Molly cites another crypto news outlet, Blockbeats, which says that people in China have been engaging in eyeball speculation. What is that? It is the act of buying biometric data scanned en masse from villagers in Cambodia, Kenya, and elsewhere by people who then sell it for $30 or less. By doing this, those individuals in China can then take part in WorldCoin and it allows them to receive the associated WorldCoin crypto payout. My God. (laughs) WorldCoin says that they are aware of this and rolling out various different measures to deal with this. But WorldCoin also acknowledges that they don't know how to stop it. Despite these precautions, it is important to acknowledge that they do not entirely safeguard against collusion or other attempts to bypass the one person, one proof principle to address these challenges, innovative ideas and mechanism design and the attribution of social relationships will be necessary. That's WorldCoin basically saying that really the premise of their entire project has a huge gaping flaw in it which sort of defeats the premise of their entire project. We will keep on top of WorldCoin.
folks once again patreon.com slash matt binder to support this show my other show doomed with matt binder and the live streams i do and the videos i put out and really anything you read or watch or listen to by me your support greatly appreciated be sure to subscribe to the youtube channel at youtube.com slash matt binder where you can catch the video version of these episodes also you can catch the live stream shows where i take calls and you can call in and then talk with me about crypto ai anything you'd like to that falls under the umbrella of the scam economy and even beyond go to twitch.tv slash matt binder and follow me there the live stream also streams there and if you're an amazon prime subscriber connect your amazon account to your twitch account and you can give me a free twitch prime subscription every month at no extra cost to you but it gets me paid isn't that marvelous be sure to check me out on Twitter, Blue Sky, Mastodon, and wherever you are on social media, just search Matt Binder and you'll find me. And of course, scameconomy.com for all the links to the podcast version of this show. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, drop a review for Scam Economy while you're there. It helps this show rise up in the rankings and in turn helps more people discover it. And with all that said, I will see you all next time in the scam economy. <laughs>